Hello to Clear Lake High School Honors Chemistry class. Today's lesson we're going to combine two of the things that we already know about, molar volume of a gas and stoichiometry, to learn how to solve stoichiometry problems involving gases. So before we begin, I want to remind you of three things. Number one, the molar volume, the volume of one mole of any gas, is 22.4 liters. And that's regardless of whether it's an element or a compound. Number two, that the molar volume is for gases only. This technique won't work for solids or liquids. And number three, that the molar volume, 22.4 liters, only holds true at conditions of standard temperature and pressure. Now, before too long, we will learn how to get around that and look at volumes at other temperatures and pressures. But for now, we're dealing with conditions of 1 atm, or 760 millimeters mercury pressure, and 273 degrees Kelvin. So let's look first at a problem similar to those we have done in the past, except this is involving moles and liters. So the question that we're looking at is, how many moles are there in 15 liters of a gas? So what we're going to do is solve for moles, starting off with what we're given, 15 liters. We're going to assume it's at STP unless it says otherwise. And our conversion factor now is the molar volume. So we know that there are, there is one mole in 22.4 liters. And we're setting it up this way so that liters can cancel. And our answers will be in moles. So when we divide 15 by 22.4, we get an answer of 0.67 moles. And that would be true regardless of what gas that it is. So it, it, there's nothing new here. We're setting up a conversion factor, making sure that what's on top will be the same unit that's in our answer, and that what's on the bottom will cancel out with what we're given in the problem. So let's look at another similar type of problem. This problem is to calculate the volume of 0.75 moles of a gas. So again, we write what we're looking for. Volume equals... What we're given, 0.75 moles, again it is a gas, times, okay now we need to cancel out moles, so the one mole goes on the bottom, and the 22.4 liters goes on top. Moles cancel, we're left with liters in our answer, and 0.75 times 22.4 comes out to be 16.8 liters. Okay, so nothing real tricky about this. We're using the same technique that we used earlier, except now that instead of molar mass, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd over one mole, we're using the molar volume of a gas. Okay, so let's look at a problem that kind of combines a couple of these factors together. So this one's a little bit trickier. We're trying to calculate the volume of 16 grams of CO2 gas. So this is naming a specific gas, and it's giving us a mass uh, instead of number of moles. So again, we set it up the same way. We're looking for volume. We're given 15 grams of the material, but now we have to convert from grams to moles first and then from moles to liters. So our first conversion factor is to switch grams into moles. So we're going to multiply this by one mole and since this number now is in grams, what belongs down here is the molar mass of CO2. We look on the periodic table, one carbon, two oxygens, and the molar mass is 44.01 grams. So at this point now, we've solved for moles, but we're still looking for volume. So now our second conversion factor will put in on top volume of one mole, and on the bottom, one mole. And so the moles cancel, we're left with liters, and 15 divided by 44.01 times 22.4 gives us an answer of 7.63 liters. <clears throat> so we kind of had to work through moles first and then convert into volume. Okay, so now with this as kind of our warm-up, let's take a look at a uh, stoichiometry problem. 
So our problem reads, in the decomposition of 100 grams of water, what volume of H2 gas and O2 gas are produced? So remember, we always begin our stoichiometry problems by writing and balancing the equation. So we have the decomposition, the decomposition of water, Remember, the decomposition of water requires electricity as a source of energy to produce H2 gas and O2 gas. A quick check shows that we only have one oxygen on the reactant side and two on the product side, so we need to put a two in front of the H2O to balance, which then uh, results in four um, hydrogens, so we need a two over here on this side. Our second step is to label what exactly we're given and what we're uh, looking for as previous stoichiometry problems. So we see that we're given 100 grams of H2O, and it's asking us two separate uh, results, what volume of H2 and O2 are produced. So we'll put x liters over the H2 and x liters over the O2, but we'll solve those as two separate problems. So now what we're going to do, our pathway here, will be to convert mass into moles, use the ratio of the coefficients, 2 to 2, to solve for moles of the H2, and then finally convert that into liters of H2. Remember, it's always the mole ratio, which is equal to the coefficient ratio, that allows us to get from one chemical in the reaction to the other. So now we're starting off here with 100 grams of H2O. Our first step is to convert that into moles of H2O. And so since we're in grams here, we're going to have our one mole on the top. And of course, one mole, the mass is the molar mass. The molar mass of H2O off the periodic table is 18.02 grams. That will cancel out our grams. And at this step now, we are at moles of H2O. Our next step is this step here to go from moles of H2O to moles H2. Well, this particular case, that's pretty easy because the coefficients on H2 and H2O are exactly the same. So we'll have our mole ratio of 2 mole H2 over 2 mole H2O. So that will cancel. And then finally, now we're at the mole of H2 step and now we have to convert that to liters of H2. So we're looking at uh, canceling out the one mole H2 and on top now instead of the molar mass goes the molar volume because we're looking for the volume of a gas 22.4 liters. So the mole H2 cancels and now we're left with liters in our answer. So we'll take 100 divided by 18.02 times 22.4, and we end up with an answer of 124.31 liters, which seems pretty remarkable when you think about it. 100 grams of water, that's equal to 100 milliliters of water, would decompose into 124.31 liters of hydrogen gas, an enormous volume. But again, that makes sense because gases take up much more space than liquids do. They're much less dense. Now let's look at our second problem. So now, again, we're starting with the 100 grams of H2O. Converting that to moles of H2O, our first step will be the same. Now we're going then to moles of O2 and then converting that to liters of H2. So we're starting in the same location with the 100 grams of water. The first step is to convert that to the moles of water. So again, we're taking on the bottom the molar mass of H2O, because what we're looking to cancel there is grams of H2O, one mole on the top. Okay, that gets us as far as this portion right here, moles of H2O, same as the previous problem that we did. Now our ratio to get from moles of H2O to O2 is that there is one O2 produced for each two H2Os that decompose. So our ratio is one mole O2 divided by two moles H2O. Okay, that takes us to the mole of O2 part of the problem right here. And then again, since we're looking for liters at the end, we will finish by saying that there are 22.4 liters of O2, or any gas, in one mole. That's the molar volume.
So now our problem is 100 divided by 18.02 divided by 2 or times 1 half times 22.4 liters O2. And we come up with an answer here of 62.15 liters of O2. On closer inspection, we can see that 62.15 liters of O2 is exactly equal to one half of our volume of the hydrogen, 124.31. And we look back at our ratio here and we see that for every two moles of H produced, there is one mole of O2. And since the molar volume is a constant, 22.4, whatever volume of H2 we produce, we automatically would produce a ratio of one to two or one half as many liters of O2. So we really can think ahead and kind of skip that step once we've started for a solved for one of the volumes. Then we can look at the ratio of those coefficients and immediately realize what the other one is. That will so let's look at one final problem, a uh, stoichiometry problem involving gases. So our question is, what volume of O2 is required for the complete combustion of 20 liters of propane gas? So the first thing, as always, is we write and balance the equation. So we have propane, propane gas, C3H8, in complete combustion, reacting with oxygen. And since it's complete combustion, it would produce carbon dioxide gas and H2O gas at a high temperature. So to balance, we have three carbons on the left. We need a three here. We have eight hydrogens, so we need a four here. That gives us six O's plus four O's is 10. We need a five here. What we're looking for is what volume of O2, so we're going to put X liters, take care to put the units there, and we're given a starting volume of 20 liters of propane. So now our pathway will be to turn moles of propane, excuse me, liters of propane into moles, moles of propane into moles of oxygen, and then finally moles of oxygen into liters of oxygen. So we'll start off with our 20 liters of the, of the C3H8. And we'll begin by converting that to moles of the C3H8 by taking our conversion factor of one mole over 22.4 liters. That puts us at this point right here, solving for moles of the propane. Then we'll use our ratio of five moles O2 to one mole C3H8. So our next step will be five moles O2 over one mole propane. That gets us to this level right here where we solve for moles of oxygen. And then finally, in our last step now, <clears throat> we'll convert that into liters, which is what the problem is looking for. So now we'll take our 22.4 liters over the one mole of O2. So moles of O2 cancels, moles of C3H8 cancels. And now if you look at this problem a little more carefully, you can see that since we use the molar volume twice, 22.4 liters of C3H8, 22.4 liters of O2 cancel, and all we end up doing is taking that 20 liters times 5, times the ratio of the coefficients, 5 over 1, and our answer comes out to be 100 liters. So in a problem that starts with liters and ends with liters, if we really can simplify that problem as long as they're gases at STP, and just multiply that original starting volume of C3H8 times the mole ratio of the two materials that are involved. Because we're going to be dividing by 22.4, multiplying by 22.4, which are going to cancel anyway, and so we can kind of skip those two steps and just end up at 100 liters. So that's the end of today's video, and now I'll have you try some sample problems. Good luck.